Comgo, Comgo Z1 10 watt laser. And yes, it is a laser engraver slash burner. So perform at your own risk because it can burn some things and fast. Don't think you're going to be putting this in your bedroom, your closet, your garage without some kind of ventilation system and filter. You need some fresh air because this thing creates smoke like crazy, especially on wood. Now let's get into the details. I did purchase this with my own money. However, I did put an affiliate link into the description below, which if you decide to click on it and purchase, will give me some extra cha-ching over time. So feel free. But let's check it all out. Pretty much comes with everything you can think of to get this thing going, including some basic software called Laser GRBL or Gerbil or Gerbil and this handy dandy little seven millimeter piece of plastic that you just saw there for spacing. So take a look at all this. As far as I can see and from what I've experienced, I've only had it a week, but this thing's pretty rock solid. Built very well. I'm extremely impressed for what I paid for this. Now, you may be asking how much did I pay? They just happen to have it on sale for New Year's Day directly from their website, comgrow.com. And again, the affiliate link is in my description below. But hey, I saved about 150 bucks compared to the big name store. As you can see here, I got right to it. I'm just gonna show you a bunch of stuff that I started throwing this thing onto. Uh, this is a piece of uh, hardwood cherry. And uh, I went across this thing at about 6,000 speed, 100%, uh, and you can see it dug in pretty good for that speed on a hardwood. Um, you definitely want to play around with your settings so that you can uh, do different things like just image burning lightly. Uh, here's a rock, and each rock is going to respond differently. That one didn't do so well, but here's another one that I've got coming up you may find some work better than others. So give it a try. At least you'll figure out what works for you. Here, this one left a white impression and it did not rub off with my finger. Um, you can take a wire brush to it and probably start scraping away at it, but at least you have an idea what you can do with that. As I was mentioning earlier, I started lasering everything I could think of. And I know there's a whole lot more out there, but this in particular is a coated knife. It's an outdoor knife. Um, I believe it's some kind of a ceramic or powder coating that they put on this thing. You're gonna have to play around with your settings on these. Each item is gonna be a little different. So in particular, this one, I went over it twice, uh, 500 speed at 100% power. Um, I tried again a couple more times on this thing at around 1,000 speed, 1,200 speed, all with 100% power. So this is a piece of stainless steel that I copper electroplated and used an acid etch solution, which is difficult to get the, the coloring off or copper. Here is the lasered version without any kind of additive or spray paints uh, trying to help get the heat up. Here you can see where dry erase marker really helped out Gave it a really good look, 100% power, 500 speed. So I did it on, again, a piece of stainless steel that was copper electroplated. Results are phenomenal. This is the dry erase marker. You can wipe this off with a paper towel. If you want alcohol, acetone, whatever, just wipe it off. So usually what I end up doing afterward is wiping these things down at least my metals with uh, a Meguiar's uh, rubbing compound or polish. You can see here's a super zoomed in detailed look. Uh, an example, these letters are only about an inch tall and you can see it has a slight texture look to it where it did the uh, laser engraving. Uh, overall I'm super happy so I figured why not try something else. What's next? Well, class. Take a look at this. 
I plasti dipped, well, spray plasti dipped this glass mug and then I had at it with the laser. So in true fashion of acid etching or laser etching, this would have taken forever doing it the old school way. I would say the results were great. You definitely want to play around with the, the different settings. See how it works best for you. So I peeled off the uh, Plasti Dip. Give you a better view of the glass here. Acid etching or laser etching on uh, a clear glass. You're going to have some transparency concerns. So just be aware that not everything is going to show up as vibrant or deep uh, as something else. But give it a shot. I went ahead and also tried a piece of uh, plastic, well, an orange juice container. I increased the speed and lowered the power. And you can see that did a great job as well. Next up, a piece for a friend of mine. This is about a 17 and a half, 18 inch machete blade. And uh, it is a coated item. Uh, it's got a little bit of a sparkly, dry texture look to it. I believe it is some kind of a powder coating. Um, the laser is running in real time. It took about 30 minutes for the first pass and then I did a faster pass afterward to do kind of a cleanup and you'll see where that gets uh, like a little more reflection in the metal. Um, here we're about 60% through. Uh, roughly 13 100 millimeters on the speed at 100% power. This is where the second pass was going through. You can see the metal's getting shinier as it's working its way up from the bottom. Really happy with the results on this. I also picked up the rotary tool. It comes with the uh, extra long cords. I believe it's for the 3D printer. This is a tiny little rotary. Um, one thing I did notice after uh, working with this, it comes with the little extra side double rollers. I just wish it had been a little bit wider on the stance for the wheels. Because it does seem a little wobbly uh, trying to hold a slightly larger item. So on this one, I had some pretty mixed results. Um, you first want to plug this thing in, home it, then go back, go to the move option, and hit the up move arrow. Get this thing far away from the, the front face, meaning the logoed area, and then move it over a little bit. Unplug these cords. This cord is going to end up going into the rotary cord. This is Y1. It has the label of Y1 just above the connector. You're going to go over to the uh, Y2 side on the right hand side. If you're looking at the logo from the front, unplug that as well. Now, I just happen to have an old Zell jug with some uh, powder coating on there I was messing with. You want to line up that rotary tool, get it as centered as possible to where that laser is going to be blasting onto that rotary or that uh, tumbler. And again, you're going to have some mixed results. I'm not sure if this is really what I expected out of the rotary. Um, you definitely want to enable the rotary option at the top and do not do not hit the home button. <laughs> but here's the rotary button. You want to enable the rotary and it'll show mirror output to rotary. Uh, 52 
and 16.399, I found that online somewhere. I just happened to put in my dimensions down here. I believe it's actually too big for what they recommend, but I tried it anyways. I did not type in the dollar sign 101 equals 65. As I found, it became worse. I just let the light burn take control of the rotary features. So give it a try, but I had much better results not doing that feature and left it at the dollar sign 101 equals 80, which is set from the factory settings in Lightburn. This piece of artwork, and you'll see there's almost like a white box around it. This is what I end up burning into this jug, along with a bunch of other stuff. You're going to go to the image. You're going to adjust the brightness, the contrast, the gamma. You're going to leave this uh, stucky. And I'm using negative image, not this invert display option up here. Leave it on negative image um, if you're trying to remove certain areas. So whatever is white will be left black. Whatever's black will be left of the metal color. So you're going to see there's a beach scene I was trying to put on there. I had so much trouble with this. And you're going to find you're going to readjust your bottle to get it centered. And you want to do this thing over and over and over until you feel it's dead center. Otherwise, you'll regret it. It's a little jumpy, but I'm sure it's such a large item that was not intended for that rotary. So here's the artwork that finally burned. And again, I've tried so many settings. I've gone super slow at a high power level. I've gone to a medium power level and sped up. I've gone to a super fast speed and kept it at full power. I'm all over the place. Sometimes it comes out really good. Sometimes it comes out kind of mucky. So. And I've also tried it on a Yeti in the background, which I put some dry erase marker on. It barely got through that powder coating. I had to go over it like three times. But again, not what I am planning to use it for. Here's a piece of ABS plastic, 6,000 speed, 50% power. It dug right into that, no problem. And of course, every woodworker wants to know about wood. Uh, this particular three millimeter ply or skin, it actually burned through on the first pass and dropped down and then started catching on fire. And I should let you know that you definitely need ventilation for this. You do not want to be breathing all the smoke that comes out of this stuff. It builds up super fast. So do not risk it. Don't think you're going to be putting this in your house and burning wood designs. Not going to happen. And unless you want all your smoke detectors to go off, do not bother. And hey, it's for your own safety. So it did really well. You definitely are going to be playing with what they call the kerf factor. Um, in woodworking, the thickness of the blade is cutting through your item. Same thing applies for a laser. The laser has a certain thickness, so you have to adjust for what it's removing as a factor towards how you're building something. So something this intricate as this box, I still had to sand just a hair on a few edges so that the box would fit together. Now, here's a recap of some of the awesome stuff that you can be doing with this laser. I picked it up only about a week ago, and I've spent a lot of time with it, super happy. Check it out, comgrow.com, the link will be in my description below. They just happen to be on sale and less expensive than Amazon at the time, so check it out, and thanks for watching.